How to install Envato Element Assets. There's a link to each one of the assets discussed in today's video in the description down below. Now, once you download and get everything set up, you want to cross create a, or at least I recommend creating a new folder. So wait for the download to finish. And I'm using WinWar, so you hit extract to pick your hard drive, click new folder, hit OK, and then make his own folder with the three folders that you see there all contained in one. There's your folder there. You click it. Now each folder comes with an install folder, but sometimes they are outdated. So like right here, you have like the tutorial video on how to set it up. Sometimes they also don't give enough details. And I think I've maybe downloaded only one asset that actually has someone actually narrating, telling you how to actually use this effect. But this here is one of the most crucial parts. A lot of times right, why the assets don't work is due to the fact you don't have the font in which they were designed for like, like whoever set them up, whoever created the preset, they may have set it up where it only works to one particular font. So they always have a font font folder within the content. So make sure you download that first and foremost. If you have, I don't have word activated on this computer. So if you activate it, you can just click the link within there. Or you can open up a notepad or a WordPad. But once you get the link in Google, go to it, download it. I don't think that I've never downloaded an asset that actually had any paid fonts, so you should be fine. Again, you want to create a new folder and extract them to your desktop somewhere just for organization purposes. You locate the folder with the fonts in it. You want to hit Control A to select all and hold Control to, uh, to unclick that last like little note file. With all of them select, you can hit install for multiple users if you have multiple users on your PC or just hit install and install all the font packs. It's a font you don't have, you won't see this message, but since I have this font, it popped up. So just hit okay and just to override or whatever. There are two ways to install the project. And this is the folder you need to install. To do so, you can actually go into DaVinci Resolve, right click on the empty space within your project manager. You wanna hit restore project archive. From there, you'll just navigate back to that folder, click on resolve and click on that folder that's in there and hit open. Give it a few seconds and it shouldn't create a new project as you see here at the top. Now all your assets should be there and available. These are fusion compositions so you just basically go through and edit them and change them how you see fit as i will always recommend you once you make your edits drop them in the power bin off to the side and that way you can always reuse the assets for future reference or for future projects and the edit project you can open it up on timeline or go up to the one of the folders find which one you want to edit then go to the folder here let me see let's go we're going yeah we're going to do the youtube one so you double click and it's just a text file once you get once it's a text asset once you get in there and basically go in there where it says your channel you leave everything else alone just type in your channel name give it a few seconds to render and you have a 3d asset play uh youtube play button this is the second way to install a project although i do not recommend it straight to the resolve folder click 3d assets and you would click on the project folder just double click and it'll automatically start installing in the background so right now it's just copy project because i already have it installed but for some odd reason every time i do it this way it always leads to as you can see there it's saying media offline i've never downloaded any of the assets and they actually when i use the secondary method and it works so you go up here and you want to click the link button and you see it's got nine files missing. Hit locate. You navigate to wherever it is the folder is on your hard drive. Go back to resolve. Click this folder. And within it, you're going to click the media files. That's going to read link all the files. Just give it a second to, to render out and to actually pull the assets in.
And once you do that, everything should be fine. Sometimes you have to do it more than once, maybe two or three times for it to actually pull in all the assets. That really depends on how heavy the project is, how like how many assets are in the project. But this one here is not that too extravagant, so I only did it once. Like I said, it took a little while for the to pull the assets, but they're there and you should have no problems going forward. You only have to do that once once you are uh activated. And this next project or this next file is a fusion template. So once you download everything, you'll see here, these are all the settings files. You need to install them into the actual program. And since I do this on a regular, I have this pretty much snapped to my start button. So go to Blackmagic Design, DaVinci Resolve, you're gonna go to Fusion, you go to Fusion, then you're gonna go to, I think it was, yeah, Templates. And then Templates, you're gonna go to Edit, you're gonna go to Titles. And you see these are all the different titles and setting files I have in installed in my copy of DaVinci Resolve. If you go back to your previous file, go to news ticker for this particular one, hit control A, select all, go on copy, then paste. You go actually do you want to continue with these, you know, override whatever, just hit yes. And once that's done, you want to relaunch or restart DaVinci Resolve. And since it's a text, a fusion text uh, file, you just basically just go into any project and go into your text. Or well, titles, I'm sorry. <laughs> so go into titles. Let's actually go up here. I got so many titles. Type in news and there you go. News sticker. Now the highlight feature, what like what kind of previews it? I believe that's only in the studio version. So other than, otherwise, you basically have to grab, drag, and drop it on the uh, timeline to actually view it. And once you drag and drop it on the timeline, it's literally just typing, type in the, the text that you want. And you see each, each one of the text fields are pre-labeled from the you know from the from the initial download. I'm just gonna type in testing. And go back and let it render. As you can see there on the left hand side now it says testing. So you can replace all the text that's within the uh the titles preset. Yeah. Or the template rather. And again you can once you're done with that you can save it as a new titles uh template or you can actually put drop it in your power bin and this last one is a cool effect i have no idea about i appreciate the subscriber for recommending this or pointing this out to me it's a pretty cool youtube what was it called youtube trendy now this is one you set up just like the uh, the first project you just go in here and restore project archive and you should be good to go i never recommend using the second method Sometimes you have to use the second method depend on how the project is set up. They might not have the D, I think it's a DRA file. So you might have to use the second method and then just do the relinking. And this one here's a little bit more heavy on the fusion. So you have to give it time to render, which is indicated by the blue parts of the, uh, the render queue here. So all the red part is unrendered. The blue part are rendered. So it's like I said, it takes a little while, especially because it's uh, a template so it has these different all on base I have all the different effects all on one timeline so it would take a little while <clears throat> now real quick just to edit these you go into the folders and go into the placeholder part the placeholder folder and with them being placeholders you basically just kind of like my initial my initial Avato element uh, video you basically want to replace the, co the content that's built into it, you want to replace that content with the content that you want within the project. And this here, you can just go through, you just change the different colors and stuff. But as far as like images and videos and stuff, you find them the placeholder within that project that you want, place your content there and it replace it and you get the full effect. This is what I meant by the placeholders and, and the placeholder has this image four, which is just grayed out. You place your image there, stretch it out to, to, exact, to match the exact length of time. 
It's usually under your element. It usually would be under elements or like placeholder or something like that. You can read through the files. It'll tell you which, you know, it tells you where you need to go. But by using the placeholder, you can actually get the effect to fit in the necessary spot. Like here, you see my symbol, my logo, whatever, within the confines of this particular structure. And see, it's, it's set here as image four. Versus if you just dropped it on timeline, it basically just, you know, either cover it up or fall behind it and won't actually fit into the template itself. And that brings today's video to an end. If you like today's content, be sure to like and subscribe, and I appreciate you watching.